Traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here, SB Trade Desk, Midweek Strategy Webinar, FOMC Day. Uh, and we've got a bunch of interesting things to look at here, uh, timing-wise. So first, let me know that you can hear me. Pooja says AV is good. Great, Pooja. How are you? And let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go over... Um, I did update to the longer term page over the weekend. As you know, the long term page is long term in nature. So uh, it's not updated a whole lot. Um, you know, it's updated kind of when I think things should be talked about on a longer term basis. And, you know, with that, I think the most important thing right now, the most interesting thing to me uh, is this dollar analog that we've been kind of tracking here for a while. So remember this comes from back in 93, 94 and into 95, right? It's just the sequence of tops and the kind of the rounding nature of the tops. It's very similar. Um, and where I th think we are in this would be about right here in the dollar. Uh, we are essentially, I think we're, and again, this isn't, full on, you know, I hate to say that this is dollar across the board because, you know, the dollar uh, has not been, um, you know, the dollar has not been, it, it's not been a, a dollar market per se, right? We've seen uh, it's euro weakness, euro strength. At the same time, we've had, you know, pound has done something else. Kiwi's done something else. Obviously, the dollar yen has has definitely been its its own thing. So, you know, look at this dollar analog uh, more through the eyes of the lens of of euro. Okay, um, but it does suggest that we are at near uh, at or near uh, a low in in DXY. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there, but. This is DXY. Now, when we look at the U.S. dollar, right? The 2011 and 2014 trend line, okay? That would be all the way down here. So... You know, is that the big level to pay attention to now? Um, it's really down near the floor from 2015 and 2016. You know, uh, a lot of people forget the the euro's, you know, been on a tear, but we haven't really seen the U.S. dollar, which is going to have yen in it, which is obviously holding this up. Um, pound and Aussie, that support's still a good deal lower. So I'm watching this. It does channel very nicely from the top and uh, the drop that we had uh, on 9.8, that gap has actually just been filled. So, um, you know, you could certainly see a, a continued bounce consolidation, what have you from, from here uh, in US dollar, but obviously trend is lower at this point. I guess with FOMC today, it would be, you know, an appropriate time to get some capitulation on this. But again, I'm, I'm gonna refrain from making general dollar statements at this time and more focus on uh, the individual currencies and charts. Going back to DXY real quickly. Okay, so 2008 low. 2011 low and making a uh, channel there. So this would be your 25 line down here, right? That was big time support. This is the 75 line, which it was minor resistance, I guess I'd call it, not, although not that precise. Uh, back in 2014, you got the dip and then you went into a blowout. That's the level that we're trading on now too. So, you know, again, we're in the um, in the area, and I, I think that the big level to watch on DXY when we do get a bigger bounce is still going to be this 
lower parallel here, which, you know, this is the bottom of the channel, right? And we talk about it a lot, but it's one of the, my, my favorite setups. When you break a channel on the downside, a lot of times you will come back to that, and that's where you'll get your um, your resistance before you can continue in the direction uh, of the trend, which is lower. So uh, this is what we've been looking at for a while. It's been, you know, a little choppy, um, but this is the big thing to watch, in my opinion. Okay, uh, let's move. I'm going to actually start with dollar Swiss here. So dollar Swiss, I think if there is a dollar bullish opportunity out there, dollar Swiss might be it. Um, this is that monthly chart, and this is that 60-month average, right? 60-month average sounds weird, but it's five years, right? Five times 12. And just a rolling average, a rolling five-year average. And what's interesting is that this average was big resistance back um, 08, 2010. And we've kind of been brushing up against it for the last three years as support. So if you're going to get, you know, some sort of upside resumption um, or a surprise move higher in the dollar against the Swiss franc, this would seem a good time to do it. And if we go back here to Here's that chart. In a reversal week last week, I wouldn't call this necessarily a, um, you know, a, a candle pattern. What you'd want to see is you want to see a close on the high, but we did take out the previous three weeks, okay, on the upside. And when we zoom into this chart, go to a four hour chart, you do have an operable slope to work with, right? So you can see the median line was touched, that kind of verifies um, or says that it's it's okay to look at this, uh, you know, is something to trade on. And we have been riding on this parallel, the 25 line. Uh, I am looking for one more dip, right? Looking for that 618 on dollar Swiss, which would put you at 95.29. And we have a blue parallel down there too. Um, based on the channel back from the top, but just, you know, a big thing to pay attention to is, is, is this 95.29. So, you know, we have an impulsive advance five waves up, um, thinking A, B, one more drop C, right? It would make, um, be appropriate again if we got kind of that drop on FOMC in, the, in, in a C wave, right? So A, B, C. If we did two legs down, you'd be a little lower, 95.10. Okay, so this area, 95.10, 95.29 is, is an area to, to focus on for support, in my opinion. And I noted in last night's update, one thing to pay attention to, obviously, with Euro and Swiss together, uh, at turns you get divergences oftentimes. Sometimes you'll get one with DXY. Sometimes you'll get one with dollar Swiss or dollar SEC. Um, but, yeah, watch for that. Uh, maybe if Euro pokes to a new high, right, and dollar Swiss obviously would not be um, probably at a new low because it's, it's so much further away. So we'd be looking for that divergence. But yeah, your level on dollar Swiss to watch 95, 09, 95, 29 for support. Okay. Moving to Euro.
well-defined channel back from April, right? We're all aware of the longer term stuff such as the extreme RSI on the weekly. Uh, I don't necessarily mean in absolute terms. I just mean the fact that RSI has been above 70 for this will be the 10th week. And we have that chart uh, back here. All right, this is nine weeks above uh, 70. Okay, the only other time that's actually happened since the you know the euro came into existence. So I'm not I'm going you know since '99 was back here in 2003, which was I, I would say it's a similar time. It was during a big breakout, and at that point you did have a 500 pip drop before you resumed higher. Okay. Um, on the opposite side, we had this happen where RSI was below on the weekly chart below 30 for nine straight weeks. That was back in 2008. And obviously we had a, a, a crazy that December. There was a 2000 pip rally over the course of a week. And um, that was here. So it just it, it rather than looking at just RSI by itself, you want to look at it, I think, in terms of time and, you know, the duration of the so-called overbought level. Uh, is pretty mature and suggesting that you could get a, a surprise move, um, a, a big reversal. Now, obviously, we'll also note that back in 2015, it continued and you went into full on capitulation. OK, so uh, this is like anything in trading, right? It's not absolute. It's not um, going to, to be a guarantee, of course, but uh, just the observation says that the conditions are there, okay, for, for a euro move to the downside from here. So price-wise today, again, while recognizing that maybe you can get a spike to new high because we know how markets like to run stops, but I will, you know, pay attention to this median line, okay? Um, it's been pretty good as support and resistance in the past. All right, all the way back really to, to July. Uh, you had some good touches there. You have some spikes through it, some resistance here in August, uh, obviously some resistance throughout September before you went into a top. And you've got the high over there from uh, August 2 at 120.70. And again, two equal legs from down here gets you to 120.64. So this is all in line, of course, with the uh, median line um, with, and the channel from April. So if we're going to get at some sort of a top, this is where I think you probably get it. Uh, now, let's say we don't. Let's say we just roll over from here. OK, well, if we roll over from here, obviously, you're still within the channel. OK, month opens 1908. But if we roll over from here, I'd be looking at, you know, a break and then trying to establish, you know, something on some consolidation, maybe back at 1908, which is the month open. And then we know 117 is uh, 117 ish is where we're you know thinking about for eventual support in Euro, but you know much to be determined obviously there. So um, those are your levels, right? That's what I'm paying attention to. Am I leaving an order to short 120, 60, 120, 70 in front of FOMC? No, I'm not. Um, watching to see how it plays out, um, but very aware that this is where you could get um, you know a decent reaction or you know even a, a broader reversal. Now. Again, the top um, that we have here was just shy of 121. Remember, there is a gap and there's a square root level at 121.03. Okay, so if the euro does want to just tick out one more high or something uh, while dollar Swiss is down near support, that's where I would watch for uh, you know that that to happen, which is about 121. What about Euro Swiss? So this rally getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven probably due for a fourth wave pullback before you can go higher in a ninth wave, either towards the top of this channel or this trend line. But you do have the old channel support here. This was before, of course, the SNB debacle, right? Back in Jan 2015. So that level comes in right around 116.25. So very close there too. Um, you know, might this level up here give us 
you know, a pause in the euro strength against the Swiss franc and euro strength generally, right? That's kind of my thought process here looking at this chart. This blue line is going to, you know, continue to be one to watch for support. That's going to be all the way down near 113 over the coming month. So 116.25, 113 look like the levels to pay attention to in Euro Swiss. All right, let's go to the British pound. <clears throat> so follow the fork. Right, we had um, a very extreme reading on RSI 78. Doesn't happen too often, um, and we have gotten a bit of consolidation here, struggling up around 136. Don't forget the Brexit gap is 36.50. Okay, um, you know if we do get, you know, an initial FOMC dollar weakness spike, you might go fill that Brexit gap before you consolidate a little more. You know, for me, the the median line is really where where the uh, the juice is here, where I think you want to uh, buy into this pound advance, take it up to 140. And I always show the example of the 2013-14 because it's really quite similar. Um, but let's just draw it on here so you can just see it's so clean without any other stuff on it okay so here's the median line right 3650 is the brexit gap 3445 uh, is the september 2016 high and then you've got the 134 area um just below okay which is which is an important spot and look let's not make it complicated you're going up here Okay, we're going up to this upper parallel, um, but you do want to get a good entry. And so the median line is the best spot you're going to get, in my opinion. And the 2013-14 rally really shows, I think, a template for how to look at trading a median line structure, right? So I know patience is, is difficult, but... Um, Back then, through the median line, the current structure we have is even better, okay? It's cleaner. But back then, you went through, hit the upper parallel, came back, came back to the median line. Obviously, took a while from October to November, took a month, uh, and then you resumed higher. And there were plenty of entries on this median line, okay? Oops, I have it drawn a little wrong. There we go. There are plenty of entries on this median line or just above it. So... Uh, hopefully the structure is one that we are, you know, dealing with for, for a good, for a good amount of time here. Um, you know, we could be dealing with this for over a year. This could be, you know, quite profitable, um, this breakout. So, you know, breakouts, one thing, but timing the entries, this is where, you know, I think the median line, uh, analysis, slope analysis really comes into play. Okay. We also have, of course, the British pound analog that we've been looking at since February. And this is from that 1989 low. Okay, and this is weeklies. Um, if we look at it here, it actually says that, you know, you might get a dip. But, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to buy dips. So um, I don't know. This might be a little too aggressive, but, hey, it's worked so far for the most part. So, you know, is it out of the question that we're at 155 by uh, December? I, you know, I don't think so. Um, that would be the trend line, actually, from the 20, uh, 2007, 2014 high would, would be all the way up there at 154, 155. What about dollar yen? Do 
color again. Give me a moment here. Okay. So here we are on the monthly chart. And just like dollar Swiss, right, we have the 60-month um, average that we're looking at. And those of you that have been around for a while, you remember the comparison with uh, 1990 uh, into, well, into the early 90s, right? And we've been comparing that to the current situation, but just the opposite, the mirror image. So we were looking for this turn back in July. Um, so might have been a little early on that, but you know the setup is long-term setup is is really the exact same, um, and that is that the 60-month average back then was resistance, right? Resistance in April 90, and then June 91, so 12 month or 14 months apart. Well, here you are now, and that was support in June of 2016, and so far September, right? So um, you've got that 15 months apart. So 15 months apart support on the 60 month average compared to resistance, uh, 14 months apart. So very similar, uh, you know, one month difference as far as the peaks and the troughs. But the idea of course being that you are in a, a significant dollar yen rally. And I guess this is where the dollar is, um, you know, the dollar has been doing its, uh, its strength right especially this month and we're seeing that of course with all the yen crosses but uh on pace here to make an outside month bullish month um in dollar yen and if we zoom into this chart you know this tells me to kind of we want to be buying dips and the levels here are the same that were noted last night you know there's a gap at 110.82 okay um obviously this move might be getting a little stretched so not trying to pile in at this point, but, you know, 11082 would be a level to watch. Um, you do have, you know, 11220 is going to be the 200-day average as well as the high from 726 as well as the high from uh, 331. So that area, you know, might cause some issues if you can get a pullback from there. One thing that helps – with trying to get into say a trending move so these are the square root levels okay and if you are in a strong trending move one thing that helps is trying to uh, buy after you get a reaction of two square root progressions all right so currently we've topped on 111 84 which is a square root level okay so two square roots down from here and i'm not saying that we go down from here because i i don't know but if we were to go down from here i'd be looking for support and a final you know low at 109.67 which is two square roots down one two right so far we've gone up from 107.50 square root level which was 107.40 was the july 2016 high we've gone one two three four square roots up right <clears throat> now back in the election um, you didn't get a two square root move down until after Thanksgiving. Um, you know, you went from this would have been enough at, you know, near 114, two square roots down, but it, it worked like a charm. OK, so uh, that's something to to keep in mind. OK, and you still had, you know, good upside from a 111 to 118 at that point. So that's something that I'm monitoring on. uh on, on dollar yen. The systems, by the way, if you you know have the uh, the alert thing uh, signed up, then you probably have been getting some of these alerts, right? You see the buying the dip. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. This is simply the RSI alert. It's been doing it on the British pound as well. Did some yesterday, um, two yesterday actually. All right. So after we look at yen, I guess we should look at gold, right?
Another thing with the, the relationship is eased a bit lately, but probably a bit early to just say that it's completely over with and uh, it doesn't, you know, work anymore. The strength of the relationship is eased, but that doesn't mean that it's completely dead. The timing is still there. So with gold, obviously a lot of people got really excited on this rally um, and always, uh, you know, hesitant to, um, you know, be with the crowd, I guess. But, you know, if we were going to get something really bullish in gold, then we should have really held this median line and that didn't happen. So for me, Yeah, Pooja says, I took the pound alert yesterday, but chicken out with 30 pips, did nothing to the U.S. session. I didn't want to hold through FMC. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, Pooja, those, the, the pound level is 236.50. And the one thing about these alerts that you guys got to understand, too, is that, you know, the timing's not going to be uber precise, right? I mean, for example, this thing is going to, it's, the, here are the alerts. But the stop level on this is going to be all the way down at 131.44. It trails it with a five-day stop, so a five-day high or low stop, right? We're at 35.50. Probably don't want to end up, you know, giving up 400 pips. Um, the midpoint of the five-day range, which is usually pretty good support and a very strong move, is going to be down at 33.81. Remember, that is the base of where we were before we went higher uh, last Friday. And that also is uh, just below, you know, the median line. It's that lower blue line. It's kind of really where I have the circle, right? It's the lower blue line, which um, you can see was support and then resistance, okay? So that to me is where, you know, I'd like to be uh, doing stuff on pound if we get, you know, a deeper uh, pullback. So with gold, um, you know, and keep this level in mind with yen, but here's the median line up here. It's about 1328, and that level, you know, now that we're below it, you'd kind of be looking at it as potential uh, resistance. Um, the 1295 area, and again, this is XAU, so this is the CFD, right? The futures levels are going to be a little bit different. Um, not a whole lot different, but... Futures level is going to be 1297. Okay. That area would be looking for, you know, some sort of a bounce uh, at that point, but the median line 1328 um, would think that you get some resistance there. So if you do get a bounce here, uh, you know, it'd be coincident likely with a dollar yen pullback. See if you get 1328 resistance, that might be dollar yen support. Eventually, um, we might just be making a broad right shoulder, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. It takes longer than people think, of course, uh, to create all that energy for a very powerful move. Uh, I do like gold longer term, but that's not to say that you can't, you know, get a, another decent pullback, uh, you know, from here. I mean, you could come all the way back to this trend line at some point, right? That's certainly a possibility. So daily RSI. If there is going to be something extremely positive that does happen over the next couple of weeks, um, excuse me, I should say, well, I should say months and, and, and even and even weeks, then what you're going to want to see is daily, daily RSI hold 40, okay? Oh, sorry, not well, hold 40, I would say, but just don't go below 30. So let's put that here. There you go, 30. All right, so you can see the 30 level, right? We are in a bullish RSI um, profile on the daily chart. We have been since we went overbought here in January, right? The pullbacks have held above 30. You got a very strong reading, close to 80 uh, earlier this month, and then we've pulled back, and here we are near 50. Look at during the very strong bull markets that you had or bull moves that you had back in 2010, 2011. I mean, you had substantial sell-offs. In gold, right? Gold fell from here, 1225 down to 1040. Okay, almost a $200 decline. Here, 1262 down to 1155, $100 decline. Okay, here, 1427 down to 1310, right? Over a $100 decline. All those declines 
generated RSIs that dropped right towards 30 to 40, but they held above 30 on daily RSI. Okay, that to me is probably the most objective thing to watch uh, for, the, for the gold market moving forward is watch the daily RSI level. Okay, here we are at 50, so there's still downside to go if we're going to get close to that 30 level before um, ticking up. But you don't want to go below 30, right? I'm going to stop between 30 and 40. So that's what I'll watch. So the near-term levels I'll pay attention to, again, median line 1328, um, former highs, essentially the breakout level at uh, 1295. But for a bigger position or for a, um, you know, an indication that gold is finally going to be sold out, right, then I would be looking at um, – I'd be looking at that daily RSI figure. And, you know, don't forget to uh, wrote it over the weekend in the COT update. But silver, you have extreme buying pressure on the part of speculative money, right? So those are your non-commercial traders. Those are your trend followers. They've bought hand over fist the last four weeks, um, whereas commercials have sold like crazy, right? So that is a warning in and of itself that this is not quite ready to go yet, right? That silver uh, maybe needs you know, to at least pause uh, you know, the previous instances we saw with this obviously was in the downtrending phase, and we did have a similar reading back in 2003, but that did still lead to consolidation. You went higher immediately, but then, you know, you weren't ready to go yet, right? So um, this actually fits really well with the analog that we have followed in silver, which coincidentally is actually compared to this price action back here. Thought I had it drawn in here. I guess not. Hold on. Let's see here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so <clears throat> this is compared to back here, right? This was the last time we saw uh, within, you know, other than the downtrending phase, when we saw that COT reading. It was right over here in July of 2003. You went sideways for three months, and then you went insane on the upside. So here we are now, and it's kind of similar, right? Um, might we be ready to go higher after October, right? Kind of sideways, really, until you know the end of October, which gives you two months from the high, and then you're ready for a big surprise, shocking move to the upside. So that uh, is something that I will continue to follow, of course, but... You know, the fact that gold did not hold the median line, the COT, um, the COT uh, observation here, right? All those things tell me that the precious metals aren't necessarily ready for prime time just yet. Okay. All right. Let's look at some commodity currencies. So Aussie was stopped out on that short, um, you know, hindsight, I guess you'd say it was a dumb trade because it didn't work out. But I actually don't think it was a dumb trade. You, you know, we were looking, uh, we had a, a, a well-defined level in the sense that, you know, the um, Australian dollar did crack below 79.95, which to me was an important barrier. Um, the only thing that got in the way, I guess, was the monthly opening price, right? You did get a good reaction initially after the minutes, right? This was These were the minutes right here, and you did spike up to 79.90, and we came off, uh, you know, 30 pips, you know, over the next two hours, but since then it's been straight up. So, 
you know, where from here? Um, well, this is a breakout. You know, in terms of the median line, we pulled back, held the median line, held the high, you know, consolidation, as I've written a long term page, is probably just that and on our way to much higher levels. Um, we'll see how, you know, how FOMC wants to come in. But if we look at this on a, on a short term basis. You know, if you're making an impulse, so maybe a one, two, three, you might stretch a little higher um in a uh you know to complete five waves up here and once we do that if we do that then maybe we have an opportunity to buy but some of the levels that we'll want to be looking at to buy eighty forty five right square root level good resistance recently um th you know earlier this month okay uh and then you've got the Week open at 79.97. I don't know if you get all the way down there or not, but uh, those are the two spots that I'd look at. You know, again, we want to see this get a little more mature, get ourselves a five waves up, pull back, and then maybe it's fresh for for a long position. And then Australian dollar. Um, advance you know where we'd be looking for it to carry median line of the decline back from 2011 along with the parallel just above it that's going to intersect with this upper parallel here so that's going to be not until the end of november but uh, generally speaking i would just be looking at the upper parallel just the upper channel line all right it's going to be you know at this point 8350 or so you know, we're still bouncing between the 75 line here and the median line. But um, given the impulsive nature of the, of the rally from from the low here from two days ago, uh, my inclination is to look for corrective weakness at this point. OK. Now, Kiwi is one that I actually like better <clears throat> at this point. Right. We've had a hell of a move in Aussie Kiwi on the upside. It seems like it might be time for, um, you know, for Kiwi to kind of take the baton. And I know there's been a lot of election news lately uh, in the New Zealand dollar. Um, but the techs have been really clean, right? We've talked about the Kiwi uh, a good deal lately. And this oil chart, oil looks really bullish to me now. I mean, this is... Today's move, you're really separating now from this resistance line. But yeah, here's that Kiwi chart. So this is the one we've been looking at. Uh, we're right up into resistance right now, actually. So this was kind of the target. But um, I want to be buying weakness here as well. So let's get creative for a second. Channel back from 2015, right? You see how bullish this RSI profile is? Went overbought twice, pulled back, and we've held 35 at the low. Um, Case can be made for two equal legs up from down here, which would put you up near 81. All right. Uh, the next area on a breakout that I'd be looking at is probably going to be parallel that extends off of this high. Okay. And that's, you know, if we were to get there tomorrow, which isn't going to happen, but that would be 70, mid 79s. Okay. So, um, you look at this channel in the center line, big reactions here, good support here, right? Breaking through it, I'd kind of put 73.15 to the recent highs, 
at 73.37 as your uh, your support to hold if if indeed Kiwi is is extremely bullish over the next couple of weeks and longer. And we are in a good time. For Kiwi. In fact, after this week, right, we go into one of the uh, a pretty bullish period for Kiwi up into October 13th, actually. All right, so uh, Kiwi could be on quite a run here over uh, next month plus. But yeah, this is one that I will want to will be wanting to add to. Okay. Down here, okay. Dollar CAD, we'll look there, then we'll look at some crosses and we'll take some questions. So, Dollar CAD, to me, I still think that you can get this one more push. It's uh that 2380 region, right? Magenta lines here, that's the 2012, 13, 14 trend line. One more push would be a dream for a, a dollar CAD short position. Um, there's other stuff up there as well. It's very long term in nature uh, and therefore I think quite significant. So Watch this. We are looking at a monthly chart here. 1986, 1991, 2002. That median line. Resistance in 2008 and 2009, financial crisis time. And guess what? It was also precise support back in May of 2016, over a year ago, right? And look where it is. It's right at 2390 or so. So that whole area that we've been looking at or talking about 2380, 2390 um, comes, you know, now you got more stuff there. So, you know, there's so much there. It, it's, you know, you've heard me say it before, it's, to me, it's kind of like a magnet price right and then this is the trend line that we've been talking about too so right up in here okay So can we just get a, a pop at some point over the next couple of days? Um, the one thing of concern here, and th this chart is much more important than the seasonals to me, I do think that you will get some sort of a low down near uh, say it on this line here after you take out the low from May of 2015. You know, so those are my levels that I want to trade at for the foreseeable future. Um, 238090, and then eventually looking for a bigger low down after we take out this low at, at, at 1919. So, you know, it's a good 400 pip range or so. Um, you know, Elliott wise, you look at this at this chart and it. You know, just going back, and now that we're on an hourly chart, but going back to the high uh, from August, you know, one, two, three, this is all a fourth wave, um, so it's ripe to give way to another another drop, okay? <clears throat> so you 
so you can you know you see how I'm, I'm going through these charts and I'm not trying to fit like fit a dollar narrative to them like I'm bearish the dollar against these commodity currencies right um, particularly Kiwi um, you know dollar cad a little more tactical like looking for a specific level but uh, Aussie I guess as well but you know Kiwi more so you know dollar yen's its own thing want to buy dips dollar Swiss want to buy you know, see if we can get that final dip to the 9509.29. But euro, I want to sell it. Maybe I'm an idiot for wanting to do that, but the evidence is just there. Um, you know, I posted uh, a, an article last night on Twitter about the. Let's see if we can find it here. Let's see tweets. Yeah, so this is the Financial Times. This is from yesterday. I mean, a little more positive, wouldn't you say, um, regarding uh, the mood towards the euro in the in the mainstream press here? And I would definitely put the Financial Times in the mainstream press, right? It is the exact opposite from what we had um, in December and January. You know, so. We have a good, you know, we've got the good chart levels. We've got tech reasons, the RSI thing on the weekly, uh, to think that you could get a drop. So maybe this begs the question: Should we just be looking at, um, you know, should we be looking at Euro crosses on the downside? You know, Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi, Euro Cat. Let's take a quick look. I just want to look at this with nothing on it and try to get a sense of um, just the pure price here. Okay, so here's Euro Aussie, okay? Four hour RSI profile is mixed, rolling over before 70. That would be considered, you know, neutral to bearish. Um, so it's not really in a trending state yet, but you make the case for head and shoulders. This is probably, this might just end up as a triangle or something or a flat. You've got three down, right? A, B, C. You got three up, A, B, C. So I'd be looking lower in Euro Aussie to at least two like two equal legs down put you down at 46.70 right euro kiwi rolling over a good amount here um, this chart, I'd probably be looking at actually 63.26 as resistance. You can see that square root level, which was support here on the way up. It was resistance as well, uh, or sorry, support on the way down, and we just broke through it. So I would be looking at, uh, you know, Euro Kiwi on the downside from here, you know, on bounces. So 63.26 being a level of short stops up here. Euro CAD. This one's a little trickier for me, um, and maybe this speaks to, you know, the fact that the, the Canadian dollar has already seen a bulk of its advances, right, or its advance against the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, dollar CAD weakness. You do have a decline here. It's fairly clean. Um, this impulsive advance. This might be a flat though, A, B, C. And we can add, we were looking at this. Fork, remember. So if you do get something of a spike, maybe you get more resistance up here near 4850. 
um, because again, you did kind of consolidate around the, the 75 line. Of course, it would be appropriate to take out the pre uh, BOC rate hike high on EuroCAD and then dump, right? You've got the underside of a trend line too. Eurocad 48.32 is the 618, and it is this trend line right here too. So, right. So leaning towards short euro, but long commodity currencies is how I'm liking it. Um, And that, for me, is kind of where I'm at with FX right now. I see that crude is continuing to gain. That's good. Up 1.8. Any questions uh, or markets or what have you that you guys and gals want to take a look at before uh, we wrap this one up? <clears throat> Maybe we should look at pound yen real quick. That's been a crazy mover, as we all know. Uh, pound yen, okay. So with pound yen, let's actually go back. Let's look at this on uh, together. So I think the operable slope on this is this one right here, right? Lots of good touches uh, here. So for me, this is probably going to be where you're going to find reactions on this angle. So we'll draw in the fork. The center line right here, it's gonna be an area eventually uh, to pay attention to. But what we can do is we can also draw in things off these highs. So 22 degrees, so you got that right there, that 22 degrees, 22 degrees. <clears throat> Johan uh, asking about the sell or hold, take profit. Yeah, so I'm looking at 73.90. I'm looking for a reaction lower off of it, um, but probably going to, or not probably, but am going to want to be buying, buying it back, um, buying Kiwi back on a, on a dip, back towards Seventy three uh, forty to seventy three twenty, right? So I am expecting something of a of a pullback here. Um, <laughs> Kelly's got a funny a funny comment here. He goes, "Hey, sorry, brother, girlfriend distracted me. I missed the first fifteen minutes. What are you looking for for a short?" Yeah, I'll get to. I'll I'll, I'll just replay it real quick. So. Uh, Kelly, with the uh, with Euro, I'm looking at 120.60 to 120.70 for a potential top, um, recognizing that it is FOMC, so you could very well see a stop run uh, up to 121, but keep uh, the dollar Swiss quote on your screen as well, because... You know, the, as we know, the divergence, um, you know, can tends to happen at important turns. So if we get a dollar Swiss into the 9509, 9529 support, and Euro's ticking to a new high, that might just be the divergence that triggers um, 
you know, a broader reversal. So uh, short answer is 120, 60, 120, 70. I, I, you know, that's really what I'm looking at. Okay. All right. Um, pound yen, that's where we were before I got distracted by, uh, by Kelly and his girlfriend. All right. Ooh, that's a good looking chart. So yeah, 152.60 in pound yen. Um, could get something there. Where's support going to be, right? Because we've talked about this thing going up towards, you know, the 160s, and we're at 151. So let's see what we get here. I don't know if that's a pipe dream or not, but it might not be. So this would be uh, an eighth of the way up. All right. So not the 25 line, but the 12 and a half line. And you can see uh, you do have solid reactions on both both sides of support resistance okay so this might be the spot to do something on pound yen it's you know you get a retest there too um the december 2015 high the breakout level so up to 152.80 or so 152.6080, pull back 48.50, and then on our merry way to the 160s. Sounds like a plan to me. Now, this might not look like much, this trend line, because it's, uh, you know, it didn't really touch anything over here. It wasn't resistance, but here's what happens when you put in fork didn't quite get there but it was this was resistance back uh, in last year last May and then you can see we kind of screwed around on the median line here for a bit so I don't think you're going to get there, so I'm not even going to keep it. I'm going to delete it. But um, I'd write down this on a sheet of paper. Write down 148.50. Okie dokie. We are just about uh, an hour in. Anything else that folks want to look at? I know we went just pretty heavy on currencies today. I didn't really look at bonds or stocks that much. Um, you know, the bond market, if you look at U.S. bonds, you know, this is a short bond. is basically a, a long dollar yen here. Um, but we've got a wedge, and this could get nasty on the downside, which is a little bit surprising to me that you haven't seen with the, the drop that we have had in the bonds, that it's really only been seen in dollar yen. You haven't seen dollar strength anywhere else. I guess you could say a little bit in, in dollar CAD. And, you know, it's not – I'll be the first to tell you that it's all about interest rate differentials, right? It's not about um, you, just U.S. rates, right? Rates move all over the world, so it's not just U.S. rates. But it has been a little bit surprising that you haven't gotten a little more dollar support off of that uh, from my standpoint. Uh, I think the bonds are going to be trading like this. So you can see this is a, a, a channel that goes all the way back to the early 80s. Markets continue to trade with on these lines. I mean, look where we found resistance. You know, and again, we're talking about um, almost 40 years of, of channel here, so it's not going to be exact, but I do think that we're lower, probably back back towards here uh, in a broad range. If we look at the 60-minute chart,
might be something like this, right? You can count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, uh, five, three, be here, A, B, C, four, and then you got a, you know, one, two, three, four, five, with one, two, three, four, five. So we might be heading into uh, something of a minor low in the bonds. Um, what's this low over here? 815. Might be heading into something of a minor low in the bonds before you get a pullback, and then you're going to have the bigger the bigger sell, which, you know, if this plays out, and being that it's it, it has been pretty close to what dollar yen is doing, um, you know, a bounce here might be what you need to get the dollar yen pullback. So heading into FOMC, maybe get a dollar yen pullback, uh, exhaustion high, watch the 200-day average of 1220. Uh, my focus is on that 2070 area in, in euro dollar and watching the dollar Swiss levels at the same time at 9509.29. So uh, I'll leave it there. Again, you can drive yourself crazy thinking about what the Fed may or may not do. I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to guess what they're going to do because even if you can guess what they're going to do, it probably doesn't matter because we've seen time and time again, the market, you know, it's to buy the rumor, sell the news thing, right? Um, you know, even if they come out supposedly hawkish, I can certainly envision a scenario I've seen it a million times where you get a rally in the bonds and dollar yen actually pulls off. So, uh, you know, beware, you know, trying to fit your narrative to the news and just follow the levels. OK. All right. That's it for me today um, to get this archive for you. Thank you for your time, as always. Very much appreciated. And um, good luck. I'll be on Twitter, of course, you know, in an hour and a half or so, getting ready for FOMC and put out things that I see um, as we head into the event. All right. Take care.